What? You got John MacArthur going against Tony Evans? You got Bodie Bauckham going against John MacArthur? And then apparently you got Bodie Bauckham befriending Tony Evans. Boy, you talk about some juicy gossip stuff, huh? Come on. Hey, Smart Christians, welcome back. If this is your first time, or if you haven't done so already, please remember, please, to hit the subscribe button as well as remember to like this video. I want to start off by reading a passage. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Verse 11, For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of God? Now, Paul goes on to say that in doing so, we're behaving like mere men, like carnal men doing so. And so a couple of things need to be kept in mind as we're reading this passage. Paul is not saying that we all have to believe every single thing that the next brother believes. That's not what he's saying. As a matter of fact, I can confidently say that's not what he's saying because Paul himself did not always fully agree with the brother. There was an issue initially with he and Peter as he rebuked Peter. Well, also Paul had an issue with Barnabas over John Mark. One issue, Paul was right. Another issue, Paul was wrong. And so what we do today is we pick sides based on labels. I am this, I am that, I am a Arminian, I am a Calvinist, I am dispensational. Which type of dispensational? I am a Baptist, I am a Methodist, all these different things. And when we say so, when we look at this verse, we tend to think that it's not really referring to me or my group, it's referring to them. They want to separate themselves. But no, Paul is even threw his name in there for good reason. We've got this issue going on in the church that just should not be there. And I bring this up because for some reason now it seems to be in the news or in the, uh, the Christian news uh, on YouTube and other places about this apparent schism or rift between John MacArthur and Tony Evans. Also, we'll, we'll talk about Vody Bachman just a little bit here, but specifically about John MacArthur and Tony Evans. Both of them are pastors, both over 40 plus years. Uh, their first concern uh, is shepherding their, their flock. Both are authors, well published. As a matter of fact, both of them have their own Bible commentary. And so these are men who have been around for a while. Uh, who understand what it's like to follow their first mandate, and that is to bring folks to Christ and to raise them up in Christ to shepherd people. It's not the same as having a, a YouTube channel or having a, a Facebook page or what have you. It's not the same as sitting back and pontificating on what others do. What's the old saying? Those that can do, those that can't talk about what others do. And you see a lot of that on YouTube. The issue between John MacArthur and Tony Evans is having to deal with a, a soteriological issue regarding people who have never heard the gospel. Before I go any further, I want to make it clear. Tony Evans, though he's been called a heretic and we toss this, toss this around too often, he's not a heretic and he's not a person who doesn't believe in what we believe in for the most part in terms of salvation. I know this for a fact and personally, and the very book that John MacArthur references, if you just read the book Totally Saved, you'll see what he believes and the overwhelming majority of what he says lines up with scriptures and um, lines up with what John MacArthur believes. It's just his last issue in terms of what happens with original sin on the cross. And I'm gonna, find, I'm gonna show you that it's not so cut and dry between the two as we think. The issue is, when Jesus died on the cross, did he pay the debt of original sin? Meaning that once that was done, all the sin debt that we have is a result of what we add to our own. With regards to 
babies, infants, those that were aborted and so forth, as well as those who are mentally uh, handicapped and incapable of coming to a conclusion on their own, both men agree that if one of those should die, that God would have mercy, that he would have grace, love, and compassion and bring them to him. The issue comes up when it comes to people who have never heard the name Jesus Christ, somebody in some tribe somewhere who's just undiscovered and, and haven't, haven't been touched by the rest of us, rest of civilization, they didn't, they've never heard the name of Jesus Christ. And so what happens to them? Well, Tony Evans has stated that he believes in, in this term, and I believe he made the term up called trans dispensationalism, whereby God will show a different type of dispensation where he brings them into the fold. John MacArthur rejects this, and I probably lean on John MacArthur's side, and I'll tell you why later on, why, why, why I can comfortably say, I'm not totally sure. What happens when a person wants to know who the true living God is, but don't know the name Jesus? Does God, one, send him a um, missionary? I kind of think that's probably what he will do. Um, I don't know though, because the Bible really doesn't say anything about this situation. Would there be some sort of um, appearance or revelation? Or will he have the same sort of grace um, sovereignly electing or sovereignly choosing or bringing these folks in the fold like he would do a baby or someone who doesn't know their right from their left or someone who's just small? John MacArthur touts, um, or he's a believer of, uh, what some have come to call the age of accountability. Now, I don't believe in an age of accountability. I, I do not. And so in that regard, I disagree with him. Of course, in the other regard, I disagree with, with uh, Tony Evans. But the question is the mechanism for how a person, why God would bring a baby into the fold um, since we all are born guilty of sin, since none of us are going to seek after him, including the baby, should the baby grow older, is still someone who is left to his own devices are not going to seek God. Um, so what's the mechanism for them coming to Christ or being saved? We can't really explain how or why God would do it. If you fall in the camp that God does bring babies into it who die early, um, well then you've got to come up with some sort of understanding of why God would do that that's just not really supported in scripture. Even if you believe that God does do so, even if you believe that, uh, and John MacArthur has, has referenced um, David and his child, uh, and also Mark, whether some would say that that's, that's a, um, we, our evidence for believing that babies go to heaven um, is light in terms of scriptural evidence. Even if you believe that babies do go to heaven, the issue is how does God do this since the baby never comes to Christ, since profession in Christ is a must. And since the baby never had a chance or an opportunity to accept or reject Christ, same way with someone who is mentally handicapped, never having an opportunity to accept or reject Christ. What about the person, this is where Tony Evans' um, theory comes in, someone in some backwoods, some place who's never been touched by society, how do they have an opportunity to either accept or reject Christ? And so what, here's what John MacArthur has to say about it. This trans-dispensationalized idea and um, who are its proponents? It is a term that to my knowledge has only been used by one person and that person is Tony Evans in a book uh, entitled Totally Saved. That book came out uh, I, I think in the year 2002. It was published by Moody Press. It is a, a book that endeavors to give a very very simple and basic understanding of salvation. Uh, at the end of the book, there is a chapter in which the question comes up about people who have never heard the gospel. And um, in that section, Tony writes that people who never hear the gospel if they will accept whatever light they have, God will acknowledge that as sufficient for their salvation. That in itself is a, I mean, that is a departure from 
historic Christian gospel. We would say that if someone lives up to the light they have, then the, the Lord, who is not limited in his capacity to deliver the truth, will bring the full light. And that no one could ever be saved apart from Christ. And so hearing what he has to say about it, then Tony Evans has also made his statement about it as well. The Bible says in Romans 1 that men suppress the truth. Now you cannot suppress what you don't have. It's like holding a beach ball on the wall. It wants to come up, but you're pulling from it down. When a person rejects the revelation of God in nature or in conscience, they are condemning themselves because something wants to come up that they keep forcing down. And that's not the scenario I'm painting. I'm painting a scenario where a person wants to know the true God, desires to know the true God. That gives God three options. One, God can send them a missionary, the traditional way. Two, God can give them a direct revelation of himself, like he did Paul on the Damascus Road. Or three, and here it is, God can trans-dispensationalize him. That is, relate to him out of another dispensation, because dispensations are based on information given. So that, all throughout the Bible, all people had to do was believe what God had revealed and they were saved. If a person believes, God, somebody's up there that created this, somebody created me, I don't know who he is, but I want to know him. If that person were to have a heart attack at that moment, God could not condemn him and be just, because God says, he who seeks shall find. So since God makes that promise, if God doesn't give him the gospel or give him a direct revelation, then he has to judge him out of another dispensation. Now here's the interesting thing about this whole thing. This is something that occurred probably 10, 15 years ago. And what you haven't seen is Tony Evans or John MacArthur saying that the other is a heretic. They're going to voice some displeasure or some disagreements, but guess what? And I, I mentioned before that uh, the time that I, that I first got into ministry, we're talking 1991, 92. And in all that time, being around some of the more well-known and, and bigger and some of the better um, preachers and teachers in America, you're going to find that their, their outlook and their walk is, and, and the way they do things is a little bit differently than the way a lot of people do on YouTube. What's happened is that if, you, if you've been around and you've had your channel for a few years or five or ten years or what have you, and you've got a little bit of a following, you kind of, it can go to your head and you can kind of think that maybe you are the the person that needs to bring the information to people. And that's what happens a lot of times. And so we pick sides of who we like. And if that person has the slightest bit of an issue with someone, uh, their followers take it to the next level. And where someone like John MacArthur never calls Tony Evans a heretic or a false teacher, um, you're gonna have followers of his who will call him a heretic or something like that, or unbeliever or a false teacher, things like that. You're going to find out that this video isn't so much about John MacArthur having an issue with Tony Evans or either one of them having an issue with Bodie Bauckham. And there are some disagreements with them as well. John MacArthur and uh, Bodie Bauckham differ on eschatology. John MacArthur uh, is a premillennialist. Bodie Bauckham is an amillennialist. In this issue, I side with John MacArthur. There's some things I don't side with John MacArthur in there. A lot of, lot of well-known and, and uh, well-trusted preachers and teachers don't reside or, or agree with John MacArthur on, and that is this issue of lordship salvation. But I also don't agree with um, Tony Evans on his issue uh, that we're talking about here. And so I don't care who you are, you're going to have someone that you don't fully agree with on everything. And that's not what Paul was talking about in the passage. Paul is saying that we be of the same mind, that we kind of walk together. We're not going to be in the habit of calling people who are brothers, calling them heretics. That word tends to get thrown around an awful lot nowadays. And there's one particular person, actually there's a couple, um, but one, I'm bringing him out because I actually like the guy. I, you know, I'm a subscriber and that is the Bible thumping wingnut. I like his content. Um, but he is a, a pretty strong follower of John MacArthur. He talks about uh, if John MacArthur's health, talks about John MacArthur, if he was at church this past Sunday preaching or someone else there, uh, he is a staunch defender of John MacArthur. He has been accused by many of carrying the water too much. And so when someone like John MacArthur or uh, Vody Bauckham um, speaks, 
Bible thumping wingnut is going to um, appreciate what they say and it's going to be in agreement. I think this time though you've gone a little too far uh, in denouncing Tony Evans as a heretic or a false teacher. Yeah, we might disagree with uh, his stance on this trans dispensationalism uh, issue. But then again, I would also ask, you know, can you please explain the mechanism of how a baby makes it to heaven? If you do believe so, uh, then what is that God is actually doing uh, that he would not do to this person who's never come to Christ? That's why I don't think that it's, it's well, I disagree with it, it doesn't put him in the, in the category of a heretic because he does believe, um, like you believe in election, he does believe that a person needs to come to Christ, that we all are sinners and we need to be saved, and we're only saved by the name of Jesus and what he's done on the cross. So he's not a heretic. There's just some other things that we might disagree with him on, but there's some things that we disagree with on John MacArthur. And again, if you don't disagree with John MacArthur on anything, then you might be guilty of idolizing him. It's just the truth. But then when you take, take this issue that Vody Bauckham, who also knows Tony Evans, is at a conference, takes a picture with him, and you're, oh my God, what's going on here? A little bit of controversy in the Vody Bauckham camp. Tony Evans showing up somewhere with Vody. Vody posting a picture on social media right here on his social media platforms. This one right here. What is going on? These are two men with two different gospels. These Why is he taking a picture with... Tony Evans, Vody Bachman, you got some explaining to do. There, surely there has to be an answer. Why would you take a picture with him? And then why would you post the picture of you and Tony Evans, the great heretic Tony Evans, on your social media page? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they don't see it as you do. You don't hear it. Tony Evans or Vody Bauckham or John MacArthur going at it with each other. As a matter of fact, as I said, this is a 10 or 15 year old issue and we're talking about it now. Maybe we're just getting too desperate to find something bad about people. I don't know. And, and again, I'm, I'm not coming at you like uh, in a condemning fashion, brother, but I think you're wrong on this issue. You disagree with Tony Evans' um, stance? Fine, I do too. You disagree with him um, and his stance in terms of race, uh, race relations in America, uh, and, and maybe you think of him as a social justice warrior. I can tell you this, though, while I may disagree with some of his um, answers as regard to race in America. He's not a social justice warrior. Here's a guy who a few years ago was, was being called as a Republican shield who was called a, a conservative preacher carrying the water for the Republican Party. Now he's gone the other side, according to other folks, uh, and now he's in the firmly entrenched as a liberal social justice warrior. I can promise you this, neither Tony Evans is concerned about what we're saying, Neither is John MacArthur nor Vody Bauckham. They've got bigger fish to fry. They've got boats to put in the water, as we say. So even with MacArthur and Bauckham's uh, disagreements as it relates to the millennium, they're not calling each other heretics or false teachers. No, uh, we can have disagreements, but we can still walk together. In my time in ministry, and it's been, like I said, since 1991 or so, the one thing that I've learned is how to say, I don't know and to appreciate not knowing everything. That has given me some clarity and some calmness to where if someone asks me a question, I'm not forced to come up with an answer. I'm not forced to say something where I don't know. I'm, it's okay to say, hey, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I think this, uh, and if someone disagrees with me, I'm not calling that person a heretic. Someone is a, is a, is a charismatic or Pentecostal person, that guy's not saved. He's a heretic. He's, he believes in tongues. No, because I know some people um, who love the Lord. They may have some their doctrinal issues twisted, but love the Lord. You go to this Pentecostal church, that charismatic church, that Baptist church, that Methodist church, uh, this place, that place. And in all these places, God is bringing people to salvation in these places. Kind of hard to imagine these people being of the devil and folks being saved. And so Sometimes we might want to pull back and see if we can, one, learn a little bit more of theology ourselves and doctrinal issues ourselves uh, and stop placing personal preferences as, as God's standards and just leave them just as that, as personal preferences. So just like there's no real issue between Tony Evans and Bodie Bauckham and so forth, uh, there shouldn't be an issue with the people who follow them causing these divisions. 
these schisms. He does say mark those who cause a division. And so I'm saying this, my brother, or anyone else, be careful. If you want to label me a, a, a false teacher or a heretic, well, so be it. Now, I'll ask you to come on uh, and let's discuss it and let's see who, who can uh, rightly divide the word, who has used what they know to bring folks to Christ, to give them an, an encounter with Christ and to grow them in Christ. Um, I'm all fine with, with, um, with doing that. What I'm not fine with is just willy-nilly labeling any and everybody uh, a false teacher or a heretic. And so as always, guys, I welcome your comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, and if you disagree with me, that's fine. Uh, you're entitled to be wrong. <laughs> I'm entitled to be wrong. We cannot continue to throw people that we disagree with out of the kingdom of heaven, which we really can't, but labeling them um, names that is going to hurt the cause of Christ, that's something we cannot continue to do when someone is legitimately a believer and a leader in Christ. Amen.